which at the time was on the moon, you know. Um, and um, the, the waiters, I mean, I worked upstairs. Um, I took reservations and typed up. on a rainy night for our uh, third Thursday poetry uh, reading series. Matt Smith, I'm the arts coordinator for the city of Tacoma Park. I wanted to thank you for coming out on a rainy night for our uh, third Thursday poetry uh, reading series. has uh, info about a lot of our upcoming events, another uh, Spanish uh, language poetry reading on April 7th, and just a lot of other stuff. Another uh, Spanish uh, language poetry reading on April 7th, and just a lot of other stuff, including if you want a 17-foot tall crocheted octopus that's now living on the downtown clock tower, we are actually giving it away. So there's info there about that, too. Um, and you can go to the uh, city website, Tacoma Park MD, dot gov backslash arts or the city's Facebook page. If you want a 17 foot tall crocheted octopus that's now living on the downtown clock tower, we are actually giving it away. So there's info there about that too. Um, and you can go to the uh, city website, Tacoma Park MD dot gov backslash arts or the city's Facebook page um, under the events also to find more info about this series. So I'm going to hand things over now to Tacoma Park Sound Poet Laureate Kathleen O'Toole. Thanks again, Sound Poet Laureate Kathleen O'Toole. Thanks again for coming. Good evening, everyone, and again, thanks for coming out on this delightful spring evening. Um, I would like to once again thank um, those who preceded me. I was not the poet laureate. Again for coming. Good evening, everyone, and again, thanks for coming out on this delightful spring evening. Um, I would have Tacoma Park when those of you who are reading tonight were selected, and so I'm um, adding my compliments to the folks from the Tacoma Park Arts and Humanities Commission and my predecessor, Meryl Leffler, 
who did such a great job selecting the poet. I think um, those who preceded me, I was not the poet laureate of Tacoma Park when those of you who are reading tonight were selected. And so I'm um, adding my compliments to the folks from the Tacoma Park Arts and Humanities Commission and my predecessor, Meryl Leffler, who did such a great job selecting the poets for this year and grouping them, which I had nothing to do with, but I've actually been able to enjoy this year and grouping them, which I had nothing to do with, but I've actually been able to enjoy the interesting combinations of talent and perspectives. And tonight, for the second time uh, this year, we're going to have a duo, a, a poet's, poet's collaboration at the end of the evening. Um, so I'm going to ask you to indulge me. Um, this uh, Today is the anniversary of my dad's death, and so I promised my 91-year-old mother that I would honor him at the beginning of our poetry. The interesting combinations of talent and perspectives, and tonight, for the second time uh, this year, we're going to have a duo, a, a poet's, poet's collaboration at the end of the evening. Um, so I'm going to ask you to indulge me. Um, this uh, today is the anniversary of my dad's death, and so I promised my 91-year-old mother that I would honor him at the beginning of our poetry reading tonight by reading a poet that he inspired. He inspired, and also um, I was in a workshop with Galway Cannell when he challenged us to use baseball slang in a poem. So I dedicated this to my dad, John O'Toole, and I'll read this to get us going tonight. And it's the season. And also, um, I was in a workshop with Galway Cannell when he challenged us to use baseball slang in a poem. So I dedicated this to my dad, John O'Toole, and I'll read this to get us going tonight. And it's the season, right? Yates catching father, and it has an epigraph from W.B. Yeats. Tread softly because you tread on my dreams. Mornings, you almost always were the first one up. Make them pitch. And it has an epigraph from W.B. Yeats. Tread softly because you tread on my dreams. Mornings, you almost always were the first one up. Make them pitch to you. Good eye. Through. Ours was the house with the bases worn into the backyard grass. You, the permanent pitcher, coaching all the neighbor kids. Pitch is wide. The ump is blind. Choke up on the bat. Follow through. Ours was the house with the bases worn into the backyard grass. You, the permanent pitcher, coaching all the neighbor kids. Pitch is wide, the ump is blind. Me to repeat myself. I thought you'd left me, that I caught you stealing third, or tagged you out before you touched home. But yesterday, I felt you in. You turn your head, adjust the volume, ask me to repeat myself. I thought you'd left me, that I caught you stealing third, or tagged you out before you touched home. But yesterday, I felt you in me, the ferocious will in my swing. Thank you for allowing me that privilege. Um, and it goes to show you, as I crouched behind the plate, in the stance you drilled into us, the ferocious will in my swing. Thank you for allowing me that privilege. Um, uh, five, actually, talented poets, and I am just going to name them and say a little bit about them all together. Um, I don't want to interrupt. And it goes to show you can incorporate anything into a poem, right? I love those challenges. So tonight we have four, uh, five, actually, talented poets, and I am just going to name them and say a little bit about them all together. Um, I don't want to interrupt. Zelda Dilworth is our first poet. And Zelda is a longtime participant in these readings, but a first-time reader. Uh, interrupt once we get the flow going, so you'll just uh, follow um, your predecessor up. Um, Zelda Dilworth is our first poet, and Zelda is a longtime participant in these readings, but a Zelda reading first tonight, followed by Donald Illich. Did I get that right? Illich? Sorry and first time reader. Uh, she's been in Ann Becker's poetry workshop and a participant in our work here in Tacoma Park and we're delighted to have Zelda reading first tonight. Followed by Donald Illich. Donald uh, is a widely published poet, a lot of well-known literary magazines. You can read their full bios in the program. And um, Donald has a new book that's just been published this year, Chance Bodies, 
um, published by the Word Works Press. And did I get that right? Illich? Sorry. And Donald uh, is a widely published poet, a lot of well-known literary magazines. You can read their full bios in the program. And um, Donald has a new book that's just been published, copies that he'll be selling here tonight at the end of the reading. Um, and then our next poet will be Pamela Murray Winters, who was born or grew up here in, on Maple Avenue in Tacoma Park, and we're delighted to have her here tonight with her new book, From Fits Bodies, um, published by the Word Works Press, and he has copies that he'll be selling here tonight at the end of the reading. Um, and then our next poet will be Pamela Murray Winters, who was born or grew up here in, on May, which she will also be selling at the end of the evening. And then finally, our duo for the evening, um, Q.R. Quasar, a.k.a. David Martin, and Maritza Rivera will be uh, in Tacoma Park, and we're delighted to have her here tonight with her new book from Future Cycle Press, which she will also be selling at the end of the evening. And then finally, our duo for the evening, um, Q.R. Quasar, a.k.a. David Martin, and Maritza Rivera will be uh, reading, and Maritza is Mariposa, did I get that right? They will be reading together a collaborative work of which Mariposa, did I get that right? They will be reading together a collaborative work of which uh, Quasar is the arranger. So we've got a musical treat, and, and uh, David Quasar is a playwright and a translator and novelist and very much an accomplished poet. And Maritz, Maritza is a Puerto Rican, and glad to hear she's going to come and join us at our uh, Spanish language poetry reading next month. And among which, uh, Quasar is the arranger. So we've got a musical treat, and, and uh, David Quasar is a playwright and a translator and novelist and very much an accomplished poet. And Maritz, Maritza is in Puerto Rico later this year and has written extensively um, poems from her son's um, service in Iraq, and he's now in Afghanistan, I understand. Puerto Rican, and glad to hear she's going to come and join us at our uh, Spanish language poetry reading next month. And among other things, she's going to be doing Writing the Rainforest in Puerto Rico later this year, and has written extensively um, poems from her son's um, service in Iraq, and he's now in Afghanistan, I understand. So we will be joint, they will finish out the night for us together. So um, I'm going to ask Zelda to come on up and get us, so um, I'm going to ask Zelda to come on up and get us started. Thank you. Started. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased to be here tonight to read some things that I've written. For the last year or so, I've participated in the poetry workshop here in Tacoma Park. And that's been a very good and gratifying experience to, for me. Well, thank you very much. I'm very pleased to be here tonight to read some things that I've written. For the last year or so, I've participated in the poetry workshop here in Tacoma Park. And that's been a very good and gratifying experience to, for me. Um, though we read our poems to others in the workshop, I'm a novice when reading in front of anything that's like an actual audience. But, uh, but here I am, so here goes. Anything that's like an actual audience, but, uh, but here I am, so here goes. The first poem that I brought tonight is called One Night My Son-in-Law Took Me Out to See the Stars. The sky was dark. One night my son-in-law took me out to see the stars. The sky was dark the water darker, and dark, the water darker, 
And because I was so old, he took my hand in his and guided me each step across the concrete break wall and closer to the spray. Because I was so old, he took my hand in his and guided me each step across the concrete break wall and closer to the spray of unseen waves. Unseen waves. And as we looked, he kept my hand in his. We didn't try to name the stars or constellations. Didn't we looked, he kept my hand in his. We didn't try to name the stars or constellations. Didn't speculate on, tra on trajectories or magnitudes, orbits or tides. We only beheld the glittering night sky deep in its mysteriousness. Trajectories or magnitudes, orbits or tides. We only beheld the glittering night sky deep in its mysteriousness. Unasked and unanswerable questions until the little house behind us filled with lights and people quietly beckoned us. It's unasked and unanswerable questions until the little house behind us filled with lights and people quietly beckoned. The next poem is about those little visitors that we sometimes find in our homes that the ones that come in unend us back to safety. The next poem is about those little visitors that we sometimes find in our homes that often stay to raise families of their own. It's called Homesteader. In the corner behind my chair, the ones that come in uninvited and never leave and often stay to raise families of their own. It's called Homesteader. Wag of her web. She is on that long, solitary watch for some small feast that may or may not come her way. Find my chair. The little spider's quiet now, safe in the swag of her web. She is on that long, solitary watch for some small feast that may or may not come her way when the lights go out. Sometimes I see her or one of her kin on the underside of my lampshade. A shadow her or one of her kin on the underside of my lampshade. A shadow wandering in fits and starts crisscrossing the yellow light while I sit not reading, but listening to the late night with its settled silences and hidden possibilities. And the little spider in fits and starts, crisscrossing the yellow light while I sit not reading, but listening to the late night with its settled silences When I was growing up in the 1930s, hidden possibilities, and the little spider waits and waits to own its darkness. When I was growing up in the 1930s, life was, uh, of course, much quieter and slower than it is today. And while airplanes were not, airplanes were not uh, exactly a novelty, when you heard one, you'd, you'd look up in the sky and look for it and see it. And sky writing was a very popular way of advertising a product back then. So this is a little memory piece about that time 
and it's called With Our Lives. Uh, exactly a novelty. When you heard one, you you look up in the sky and look for it and see it. And sky writing was a very popular way of advertising a product ahead. On summer days, long before we'd learned to read, we'd sometimes look up to see sky riders overhead, those fly boys of long ago. So this is a little memory piece about that time, and it's called With Our Lives Ahead. On summer days, long before we'd learned to read, we'd sometimes look up to see sky riders overhead, those fly boys of long ago, whose airplanes looped across the sky to weave inscrutable messages. Airplanes looped across the sky to weave inscrutable messages, sometimes for Pepsi and sometimes for girls named Patty or Jean. Sometimes for Pepsi and sometimes for girls named Patty or Jean. Or so we were told by a wise nine-year-old nine-year-old and we'd imagine those handsome young men with their movie smiles and their goggles and caps with leather ear flaps sail and we'd imagine those handsome young men with their movie smiles and their goggles and caps with leather ear flaps sailing off into the blue the drone of their engines carried away the drone of their engines carried away by high winds. And when the tiniest speck slipped away, we'd look across the street at the teenage girls sitting on their porch by high winds. And when the tiniest speck slipped away, we'd look across the street at the teenage girls sitting on their porch steps, talking or painting their nails and smiling secretly at the sky while we were left with only the quiet play of light beneath the trees and smiling secretly at the sky while we were left with only the quiet play of light beneath the trees and the sweet pain of waiting to This next, in this next poem, I was thinking of the up. This next, in this next poem, I was thinking of the generation that came just before us. As we were growing up, just seemed to be a part of the landscape uh, and uh, that we were ready and eager to leave behind. Those people who, as we were growing up, just seemed to be a part of the landscape uh, and uh, that we were ready and eager to leave behind. Once again, one by one, they laid aside their life's work. The it's called The Escape Artist Fails Again. One by one, they laid aside their life's work, the toy salesman, the accountant. One by one, they turned their backs and died undignified deaths, full of fear and the quiet by the keepers of the kitchens. One by one, they turned their backs and died undignified deaths, full of fear and the quiet violence of pain to reach for pills or water or another's hand. Their houses are gone. Eyes wasted, wrists slackened, too weak to reach for pills or water or another's hand. Their houses are gone now and the now and the green backyards the shadowy figures calling from the shed behind the fig trees, the old women 
in torn straw hats, stepping into the sunlight to toss backyards, the shadowy figures calling from the shed behind the fig trees, the old women in torn straw hats, stepping into the sunlight to toss corn to the chickens. I was a squatter in their rich soil, refusing to pay my rent anywhere, so certain I was that I'd wake up the next day gone corn to the chickens. I was a squatter in their rich soil, refusing to pay my rent anywhere, so certain I was that I'd wake up miles, rivers, mountains, whole new weather patterns wedged firmly between us. But now I come flying back with the crows, the next day gone forever, miles, rivers, mountains, whole new weather patterns wedged firmly between us. But now I come flying back with the skirting trees, arriving at last only to hover and pick the old fields again and again. Seeking tailwinds, skirting trees, arriving at last only to hover and pick the old fields again and you know, sometimes when we have a particularly vivid dream, it'll stay with us all the next day. Well, this poem is about that experience again. You know, sometimes when we have a particularly vivid dream, it'll stay with us all the next day. Well, this poem is behind us all day long. And this is called The Half-Life of Dreams. And it's actually two poems reflecting two very different kinds. It's the way a dream trails behind us all day long. And this is called The Half-Life of Dreams. And it's actually two poems reflecting. You were back in my life again, but younger than when I first met you with a pomp of hair and freckled ears. Very different kinds of dreams. Dream one. You were back in my life again, but younger than when I first met you, with a pen and about to drive off into the night in your old convertible. You turn the key and we fly out, pomp of hair, and freckled ears. But never mind, in this dream, we are married again and about to drive off into the night in your old convertible. I lay my head against your shoulder and watch the sky sliding overhead, star-flecked, tree-flailed. You turn the key and we fly out, wind swooping past us as the engine drones. I lay my head against your shoulder and watch the sky sliding overhead, star-flecked, tree-flailed, the moon a lustrous rush silvered between buildings. When I wake, I am coddled soft. When I wake, I am coddled softly, still in the dream, holding on all day to its rest. Still in the dream, holding on all day to its raveling edges. Dream two. Who dreams of who dreams of going to the grocery store? Drifting aisle by aisle, dazed and floating in that most pedestrian of spaces. I carry a knife in my purse long enough and sharp enough to tease out the secrets of vegetable and fruit going to the grocery store, drifting aisle by aisle, 
dazed and floating in that most pedestrian of spaces. I carry a knife in my purse, lift, testing for freshness, lift, slipping it sideways to lift the prickly skin of pineapple or peel back kiwi's fuzzy cover to reveal succulents and sharp enough to tease out the secrets of vegetable and fruit. Lift, testing for freshness, lift, slipping it sideways to lift the prickly skin of pineapple or peel back kiwi's fuzzy cover to reveal succulents or rot. Piles of plum, avocado, piles of plum, avocado, eggplant, all know what they know and hold their knowledge close. I open my eyes. Eggplant, all know what they know and hold their knowledge close. I open my eyes. Suspicion lingers there. The coffee Suspicion lingers there. The coffee is too bitter. The milk is souring, I think. And later at the store, a surly clerk with a bloody stain of berries. The milk is souring, I think. And later at the store, a surly clerk with a bloody stain of berries across his apron arranges his wares, arranges his wares, stares hard at me and too long even though I've left my knife at home. <laughs> Stares hard at me and too long, even though I've left my knife at home. <laughs> One more, okay. I have, uh, One more, okay. I have, um, well, the next poem is about a part of our anatomy that we don't usually want to spend a lot of time thinking about. Well, the next poem is about a part of our anatomy that we don't usually want to spend a lot of time thinking about our feet and it's called Cinderella gets her toenails cut <laughs> my feet I hardly know them anymore it's kind of meditation on feet and it's called Cinderella gets her toenails cut <laughs> my feet I hardly know them anymore. Old flattened toes tucked one under the other from years of overfolding, and each with its own tale to tell of decades buttressed by bunions, with toes tucked one under the other from years of overfolding, and each with its own tale to tell of decades leather bound. People heels of fantasy shapes with Cinderella dreams and dollar signs. Airless and dark, of ankle straps and steeple heels, of fantasy shapes with Cinderella dreams and dollar signs. Have you intently now frowning and angling her clippers hard? She looks up, nails like this, I asked the young woman at the nail spa. She is bent intently now, frowning and angling her clippers hard. She looks up. Some, sometime, she says, then adds with a shy smile and that economy of language used by the newly arrived. When people old, once when I was young, I visited. Sometime, she says, then adds with a shy smile and that economy of language 
used by the newly arrived. When people old, wanting home, where an ancient Cajun woman lay bedridden, refusing to let anyone touch her toenails. When attendants came with scissors and clippers, she'd scream and kick and curse them in France. When I was young, I visited a nursing home where an ancient Cajun woman lay bedridden, refusing to let anyone touch her toenails. When attendants came with scissors and clippers, she'd left the room. And so for years, her toenails grew unfettered to incredible lengths. Ten, nine, ten inches long, twisting and thick and cursed them in French until they left the room. And so for years, her toenails grew unfettered to incredible lengths. Ten, nine, ten inches resembling small tree branches. Have you ever seen a 10 inch toenail? It makes you gasp and wonder, what are we really made of after this long twisting and thickening into something resembling small tree branches? Have you ever seen a 10 inch toenail? It makes you gasp. I have a friend who went to China and brought back a pair of binding shoes, newly made for the tourist trade, but speaking eloquently of that and wonder, what are we really made of after all? Animal? Vegetable? I have a friend who went to China and brought back a pair of binding shoes, newly made for the tourist trade, but speaking eloquently of that old peculiar horror that well-born women once succumbed to. The shoes, four inches long, once succumbed to. The shoes, four inches long, toe to heel, are beautifully embroidered. I cr are beautifully embroidered. I cr and framed now and hung on his living room wall. I cringe when I see them, the ghost. I cringe when I see them, the ghost of every corn and weeping blister screams at me not to look, but I do. And I curl my toes at the sight, the thought, then sigh, then shrug, then think, most of every corn and weeping blister screams at me not to look, but I do, and I curl my toes at the sight, the thought, then sigh, then shrug, then think, maybe tomorrow I should get my toenails cut. And the last, the last poem is called Compensations and Small Pleasures. The last poem is called Compensations and Small Pleasures. And it's, a, it's about growing older, actually. Uh, I, should, uh, I, should, I should mention um, old age uh, sometimes creeps up on us but we need to remember that it does have its compensations and small pleasures. You can snore. It's okay because, after all, you're grandma now. And you can make other unseemly noises. And um, Old age uh, sometimes creeps up on us, but we need to remember that it does have its compensations and small pleasures. You can snore. It's okay because, after all, you're grandma now. And you can make other unseemly noises and pretend you didn't hear. You can talk to yourself. You can tell other, pretend you didn't hear. You can talk to yourself. You can tell other people how to do things because they haven't lived long enough to know as much as you. 
and you may even fudge your age upping how to do things because they haven't lived long enough to know as much as you. And you may even fudge your age upping or downing it as circumstances require then downing it as circumstances require then blame it on your memory. You can sit in the easiest chair closest to the fireplace and take off your socks. Memory. You can sit in the easiest chair closest to the fireplace and take off your socks. You can scare people with your feet. You can scare people with your feet. You can send everybody into a frenzy looking for your lost hearing aid, then find it in a, a fold of your pocket. You can turn up the TV. Com you can send everybody into a frenzy looking for your lost hearing aid, then find it in a, a fold of your pocket. You can turn up the TV comfortably loud and go to sleep. Sleep. You can ask to be driven. Oh, I could go on and on and on, but to be driven. Oh, I could go on and on and on, but time is short and my watch is broken. And I think my time is up. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you very much for listening. Broken. And I think my time is up. <laughs> So thank you. Thank you very much for listening. Hi. Hi, I'm Don Illich. Um, I have a book that came out in 2018 called uh, Chance Bodies, but the poems I'm going to read for you today are very new. They're from my next manuscript that I'm calling Ghost Factory, 2018, called uh, Chance Bodies, but the poems I'm going to read for you today are very new. They're from my next manuscript that I'm calling Ghost Factory. Um, this one this first one is called the prison house of language prison house of language and as a quote from nietzsche we have to cease to think if we refuse to do it in the prison house of language and as a quote from nietzsche we have to cease to think if we refuse to do it in the prison house of language for we cannot reach further than the doubt which asks whether the limit we see is really a limit Limit. I earned three words to my vocabulary, calipers, wedge, viperous, but none of them could help me escape. If I had chisel or razor, I could make a hole in the wall or cut a guard on the way out. If I had mallet or birthday cake, I could bang through the pipes or hide a weapon in flour and frosting. I earned three words to my vocabulary, calipers, wedge, Viperous, but none of them could help me escape. If I had chisel or razor, I could make a hole in the wall or cut a guard on the way out. If I had mallet or birthday cake, I could bang through the pipes or hide a weapon in flour and frosting. The warden was very careful with our language, what we could suffer to learn per month. He owned a dictionary, safeguarded in his office, protected by alarms and his lieutenants, a few syllables per month. He owned a dictionary, safeguarded in his office, protected by alarms and his lieutenants. I'd only seen it once as he thumped it after a prisoner escaped using the word obsequious. I'd only seen it once as he thumped it after a prisoner escaped using the word obsequious to charm a guard and slipped by her on his way out the facility. 
We must be more careful, he told the guards and us. There must be no to charm a guard and slip by her on his way out the facility. We must be more careful, he told the guards and us. There must be no more careless use of jargon. Every night, careless use of jargon. Every night I lie on my bunk, dreaming of finding that book, paging through it as if it was magic. I'd find homicide and jailbreak. I'd discover massacre and riot. Dreaming of finding that book, paging through it as if it was magic. I'd find homicide and jailbreak. I'd discover massacre and riot. Then I would share them with the rest of the prison. Then I would share them with the rest of the prison. Only some of us might make our way out, but we'd know what to say to strangers who'd hide us. We'd have all the right entries in our head, the synonyms and antonyms. And only some of us might make our way out, but we'd know what to say to strangers who'd hide us. We'd have all the right entries in our head, the synonyms and antonyms that mean home. This one, next one is kind of a fun one, kind of influenced by the, um, the statue controversy they had in Virginia. Um, obviously, not, that's not a fun situation. This one, next one is kind of a fun one, kind of influenced by the, um, the statue controversy they had in Virginia. Um, obviously, not, that's not a fun situation. It's uh, definitely weird. Uh, backward statue. The statue sat in the back of college classes, disagreeing with the the, st the statue in this poem is is uh, definitely weird. Uh, backward statue. The statue sat in the back of college classes, sing fraternity brothers to chant on his behalf. At the protest, he demand his brethren be left alone. Those who represented the wrong cause, holding swords aloft on marble horses, disagreeing with the professors, throwing out arguments, convincing fraternity brothers to chant on his behalf. At the protest, he'd demand his brethren be left alone. Those who represented the wrong cause, holding swords aloft. Did our diversity group meetings, declared that prejudice was an illusion and programs were a waste of time. The statue lived in my backyard shooting off bird marble horses. Even my workplace was infiltrated. He attended our diversity group meetings, declared that prejudice was an illusion and programs were a waste of time. The droppings down his back. Many nights he wished I'd let him inside and I lied, saying my parents would get upset with me. In fact, they were his biggest fan. Backyard, shooting off birds that wanted to peek, to, to peck, his ears and eyes, smear droppings down his back. Many nights he wished I'd let him inside and I lied, saying my parents would get upset with me. I slept through their rants, though, hoped the statue would go, or he'd freeze in some in, in place somewhere, a backward sign of were his biggest fan, didn't understand why borders shouldn't be blocked, migrants not be turned roughly away. I slept through their rants, though, Hope the statue would go, or he'd freeze in some. This one is uh, uh, called Escape. So much was on fire, it was easier to say. In, in place somewhere, a backward sign of America that soon be dragged down. This one is uh, uh, called Escape. As were the cubes from the freezer though the fridge was burning. The car was almost totally enveloped by flame. So much was on fire, it was easier to say what wasn't. The TV was not blazing, though it had plenty of sparks. Our long johns were cool as ice, as were the cubes from the freeze, but the driver's seat remained chilled. That's how we escaped, jumping in the vehicle, extinguishing the passenger seat. Our neighbors were covered in flames, but they still waved goodbye as we fled, raising their cups of coffee, freezer, though the fridge was burning. The car was almost totally enveloped by flames, but the driver's seat remained chilled. That's how we escaped, jumping in the vehicle, extinguishing the passenger seat. 
Our neighbors were covered in flames, but they still waved goodbye as we fled, raising their cups of coffee, holding their torched pet. The streets were full of lava. A volcano burst in a town not far away, holding their torched pet. The streets were full of lava. A volcano burst in a town not far away, but we felt we could outrun it. Over the horizon, peaks rose, covered in ice. It was there we could love one another. It was there the fires were only in our dreams. This is letting go, and it's kind of like, what happened if we broke all our instruments? But we felt we could outrun it. Over the horizon, peaks rose, covered in ice. It was there we could love one another. It was there the fires were only in our dreams. This is letting go, and it's kind of like, what happened if we broke all our instruments? Uh, letting go. Letting go. We broke thermometers, ripped apart air gauges. We gathered the clocks into a huge pile, set fire to time. Soon, with all the devices, we broke thermometers, ripped apart air gauges. We gathered the clocks into a huge pile, set fire to time. Soon, with all the devices destroyed, we wandered around the village, unable to tell one, unable to tell one moment from the next. The sky lived without telescopes, so no one could guess how far away stars were. We cracked speedometers, so we were afraid to go. F the sky lived without telescopes, so no one could guess how far away stars were. We cracked speedometers, so we were afraid to go fast, run over someone. Mostly, we lay on the grass, we lay on the grass, not bothering to count airplanes flying above us or the lights of buildings far away. Like animals, we stepped slight lightly, count airplanes flying above us or the lights of buildings far away. Like animals, we stepped slight lightly without knowing what would happen to us. The clouds, shaped like deer and lions, paraded above us, and we forgot how to number them, only recalling how they lived in the wild, how it was, how it was we who, shaped like deer and lions, paraded above us, and we forgot how to number them, only recalling how they lived in the wild, how it was, how it was we who let them loose again. This is kind of a fun, humorous workplace poem called The Suit Ocean. This is kind of a fun, humorous workplace poem called The Suit Ocean. He was sinking in his jacket, a seam too big about to swallow him. Forcing himself up, he greeted his friend a sometimes lover, though he wanted to wave to the sea blue that seemed too big about to swallow him. Forcing himself up, he greeted his friend, a sometimes lover, though he wanted to wave to let her know he was in trouble. The presentations, their voices could hardly reach him, sending shipwrecked language into his ears, but he could breathe fully. At the meeting, he attempted to put on scuba gear, journey through the ocean of presentations. Their voices could hardly reach him, sending shipwrecked language into his ears, but he could breathe fully again. At his desk, the screen allowed him time he pressed a button, no longer plunged beneath waves. Soon, his irradiated tie became fouls. He felt saved each time he pressed a button, no longer plunged beneath waves. Soon, his irradiated tie became a hot air balloon, became a hot air balloon, floating him to the clouds, which had some work for him to do, to write the storm that strike his office, invent memos that free the cubicle dwellers. Would he come down again? Only a pen could pop us, which had some work for him to do, to write the storm that strike his office, invent memos that free the cubicle dwellers. Would he come down again? Only a pen could pop him, 
Blast his confidence. Blast his confidence. Turn him into the Hindenburg. This is a kind of a romantic, the Hindenburg. This is a kind of a romantic poem, I guess. Uh, it's called Magnetized. Our bodies are magnets chasing each other down the street. I am ahead. I think I can. Yes. Uh, it's called Magnetized. Our bodies are magnets chasing each other down the street. I am the waves you produce retard my progress, force me into your lengthy embrace. You are always slower, but your romantic mass is like Jupiter, drawing in what must be beautified. I'm ahead. I think I can almost live without you. Then waves you produce retard my progress, force me into your lengthy embrace. You are always slower, but your romantic mass is like Jupiter, drawing in what must be beautified. When we are both together, the other things of this world are attracted to us. Mailboxes, picket fences, wind chimes, dragons of this world are attracted to us. Mailboxes, picket fences, wind chimes, drag their forms toward ours until we're a suburban conglomerate surrounded by all the objects that make a life. Neither one of us want it, but we find ourselves in a ranch house, in a blue kitchen, drinking coffee and cursing the songbirds that forced us awake. Last night, we were on top of one another, forms toward ours, until we're a suburban conglomerate, surrounded by all the objects that make a life. Neither one of us want it, but we find ourselves in a ranch house, in a blue kitchen, There's no confusion with our bodies, no moving downward in existence or south. coffee and cursing the songbirds that forced us awake. Last night we were on top of one another, acting magnetized, so we both pointed north, so there was no confusion with our bodies, no moving downward in existence or south. Orchards. I take small footsteps. I take small footsteps to get where I'm headed so I can see the stars one at a time, count every tree I pass. Get where I'm headed so I can see the stars one at a time, count every tree I pass. At one time I'd run over everyone, unwilling to share a bagel or discuss works of modern art. art. Before I was somewhere, I was already somewhere else. My feet burned with motion, my arms quickly swimming through the world. It left no impression on me, kept my heart bare as a poor man's cupboard, cupboard. I had to slow things down, let the inch be the standard measurement of my travel distance. Before I was somewhere, I was already somewhere else. My feet burned with motion, my arms quickly swimming through the world. It left no impression on me, kept my heart bare as a poor man's cupboard. cupboard. I had to slow things down, let the inch be the standard measurement of my travel distance. Others might suspect I lost my mind, attempt to shove me forward through the landscape. I will not let them hurry me, even if I crawl day and night. Who else could see the orange sun rise? I will not let them hurry me, even if I crawl day and night. Who else could see the orange sun rise through orchards, or enter the surface of the moon with a motionless eye? Rise through orchards, or enter the surface of the moon with a motionless eye. And uh, I just have two poems. Is that okay? Two. Um, this is, this is really new, 
Uh, it, it's so new, I'm wondering why I'm reading it. Uh, it's, it's called Just, Just Souls. The and uh, I just have two poems. Is that okay? Two? Um, this, is, this is really new. Uh, it, it's so new, I'm wondering why I'm reading it. Uh, it's, it's called Just, Just Souls. The floating things of this world, the balloons, dirigibles, kites, this world, the balloons, dirigibles, kites, even the sharp flight of gliders, we schemed ways to destroy them. Sending remote controlled planes in the dark, low flight of gliders, we schemed ways to destroy them. Sending remote controlled planes in the dark, loaded with explosives, aiming small missiles at their bodies, fly aiming small missiles at their bodies, flying them, flying to them on jetpacks to damage their workings. But we never want, went through the through with these plans. Flying them, flying to them on jetpacks to damage their workings. But we never want went through the through with these plans. Instead, we grumbled to ourselves about these vessels, these vessels, how they should be grounded for life. One day we'll exhaust ourselves with anger, die on the spot. We'll find that we've become floating too, how they should be grounded for life. One day we'll exhaust ourselves with anger, die on the spot. We'll find that we've become floating too, our atoms will loosen, the co forces dissipating. The balloons will bob goodbye to us, while dirigibles will bounce against us. Even the kites will fly with us. The cohesion of our forces dissipating. The balloons will bob goodbye to us, while dirigibles will bounce against us. Even the kites will fly with us, as if we're all just souls. And this is the uh, title poem from my uh, new manuscript, which we'll hopefully find a publisher someday. Um, it's called Ghost Factory. And this is the uh, title poem from my uh, new manuscript, which we'll hopefully find a publisher someday. Um, it's called Ghost Factory. Ghost Factory. At the ghost factory, no one breathed, made mistakes. Thank you for listening. I really appreciate having a great audience. Ghost factory. At the ghost factory, no one breathed, made mistakes, delivered to haunted houses around the world. They didn't question their work, paid in gold coins to place on their eyes. Workers ripped spirits out of the bodies, putting them on a conveyor belt to be delivered to haunted houses around the world. They didn't question their work, paid in gold coins to place on their eyes. They were shivering in darkness. Their feet wouldn't get wet. None of them would be flooded by forgetfulness. They'd really easily cross the murky river with the boatman's help. No being stranded on shore, shivering in darkness. Their feet wouldn't get wet. None of them would be flooded by forgetful. <laughs> They'd remember what happened, even when they didn't wish to. Thank you. Hi, I'm Pam. Can you hear me okay? Hi, I'm Pam. Can you hear me okay? Probably hear me too well and be tired of my voice pretty soon. Um, it's wonderful and it's weird to be here because I grew up 
right at the top of the hill on Maple Avenue. I don't know which way that is from here. This was my library where I learned to read, and this is where I met my husband. Um, my mother used to dress up. Be tired of my voice pretty soon. Um, it's wonderful and it's weird to be here because I grew up right at the top of the hill on Maple Avenue. I don't know which way that is from here. This was my library where I learned to read, and this is where I met my husband. Um, my mother in the parade as various characters. Uh, my mother got hand-me-downs from Sandy and Sammy and Ruth Abbott back in the day when he was gov uh, governor, I wish, um, mayor. <laughs> so, so used to dress up and march in the parade as various characters. Uh, my mother got hand-me-downs from Sandy and Sammy and Ruth Abbott back in the day when he was gov uh, First poem is about her, uh, and it's called 55. I remember how my mother dropped as if on an escalator to the wrong floor. Governor, I wish. Um, mayor. <laughs> so, so I've been thinking of my mother a lot, and uh, this first poem is about her. Uh, and it's called 55. I remember how my mother dropped as if on an escalator to the wrong floor, falling into the dark. Her bold flowers became scraps of a faded spring. She went gray. She bold flowers became scraps of a faded spring. She went gray. She started using phrases like, too old for it, and not appropriate. Did she know that British meanness mutton dressed as lamb? And how I, 15, all zits and tits and bicentennial starry-eyed, insisted she could be whatever she wanted, as she told me. We wore costumes using phrases like, too old for it, and not appropriate. Did she know that British meanness mutton dressed as lamb? And how I, 15, all zits and tits and bicentennial starry-eyed, insisted she could be whatever she wanted as she told me. We wore costumes for the celebrations that summer, pioneers, and maybe that reset her delicate machine. From there, her delicate machine. From there on out, she was her old, ageless self. I remember these things as I look in the mirror the day after my 55th birth, her old, ageless self. I remember these things as I look in the mirror the day after my 55th birthday and see decades of crooked ponytails, dark circles I had at 10 and 30s I had at 10 and 32, a scar that's been there so long I don't remember how I got it. I do remember though, I was on 32, a scar that's been there so long I don't remember how I got it. I do remember though, I was on Willow Avenue and I ran into a parked car on a sled, nine stitches. This is called Hoisting the Pretend Sail. Later, I learned my favorite home was away. <laughs> this is called Hoisting the Pretend Sail. Later, I learned my favorite home was away. My favorite songs came in tabletop jukeboxes, in bus stations, on route, unknown cousins. My favorite candies were the ones you broke with a hammer or both your hands, bark, brittle, root to the tombs of unknown cousins. My favorite candies were the ones you broke with a hammer or both your hands, bark, brittle, sugar rock, the necklace that rained the rainbow O's with the snap of arms, draw blood in the mouth and later raise welts on the tender buds. Drunk on dad's root beer and being five, and they dent your palms, draw blood in the mouth, and later raise welts on the tender buds. Drunk on dad's root beer and being five and a half, I'd collage a life from the rings and swords that fell from the half. I'd collage a life from the rings and swords that fell from the gumball slot. Not for me the chewy cherry cigar, the white powder smokes. I wanted handfuls foreign cargo, salvaged moments on my tongue from the gumball slot. Not for me the chewy cherry cigar, the white powder smokes. I wanted handfuls, foreign cargo, salvaged moments on my tongue. 
And not for me the life you earn, but the one you collect. And not for me the life you earn, but the one you collect. Bits, bins, barnacles. But that was a way when my mind was loose as the sea, as young as the sea is old, when I could say, it's bins, barnacles. But that was a way, when my mind was loose as the sea, as young as the sea is old, when I could say, I'm a princess, a pirate, princess, a pirate, a tabby cat, and make it so. Adulthood, this is the worst trip. Well, a tabby cat and make it so. Adulthood, this is the worst trip. Well, I had kind of a kind of a bad stretch there starting in November 2016. Yeah, I know we all did, but I picked a particularly bad time to change my medications, my antidepressants. <laughs> And then I worked as an election judge starting in November 2016. Yeah, I know we all did, but I picked a particularly bad time to change my medications, my antidepressants. <laughs> and then I worked as an election judge. But I've always liked Maryland because I remember when I was a kid, the 4th of July parade would have both the veterans of foreign wars and that group called the Morning Few. Weird, but. I've always liked Maryland because I remember when I was a kid, the 4th of July parade would have both the veterans of foreign wars and that group called the Morning Few, which was like, you know, and Coco and her cart, ah, sorry, deep cuts, Tacoma. Um, so this is a poem that's kind of inspired by that whole feeling after a Grateful De Dead tribute band and you know, and Coco and her cart, ah, sorry, deep cuts, Tacoma. Um, so this is a poem that's kind of inspired by that whole Maryland yellow. Surely the garden of loving weirdness lies along a four lane road in Maryland. Not so much a scenic highway feeling after Maryland, late, late November 2018, Maryland yellow. Surely the garden of loving weirdness lies along a four-lane road in Maryland. Not so much a scene down whose shoulders squat the hotel, St. Something's Church, the eating place. Every now and then, that flatway trail as a trip south to north in a state that's both. Down whose shoulders squat the hotel, St. Something's Church, the eating place. Two weeks ago, the citizens entered the school to cast their ballots. No fights broke out. Poll workers had odds on the turnout. Every now and then, that flag, Renaissance meets racetrack, red and yellow, black and white. Two weeks ago, the citizens entered the school to cast their ballots. No fights broke out. As they cross the lot this afternoon, lips tight as a live oyster, folks twist in their navy windbreakers. Look out. Poll workers had odds on the turnout. To the winner went Old Bay Peanuts, a donation from one of the election chiefs. Didn't matter which party. As they cross the lot this afternoon, lips tight as a live oyster, folks twist in their navy windbreakers. Buffalo plaids, bent denim, shit-edged boots. They might have worked nowhere, voted for no one. They want only to fetch the mail, voted for no one. They want only to fetch the mail, to bring the dogs home. Imagine that flag, not heraldry, but patchwork, to be torn. Division stitched bright, then ripped. This lonesome day, a woman drives, her car, her state, a shell. She's of it? and not of it, to bring the dogs home. Imagine that flag, not heraldry, but patchwork, to be torn, division stitched bright, then ripped. This lonesome day, a woman Things happen, so tired she could let go, so much she can't carry, can't unravel. She might let the road bend, 
The whole balled up lot of her lead her right into the trunk of that oak tree, but there's a drives, her car, her state, a shell. She's of it and not of it. Things happen. So tired she could let go, so much she can't carry, can't unravel. She might let the road bend. The whole balled up lot of her lead her right into the trunk of that oak tree, but there's a snippet of yellow cloth borne up. Look, there's a bird. Cloth borne up. Look, there's a bird. I didn't expect to write to read so many dark poems tonight. <laughs> I haven't read this one before. And I wrote it while I was watching TV coverage of uh, one of the many unfortunate events that have happened. And I didn't expect to write, to read so many dark poems tonight. <laughs> I haven't read this one before. And I wrote it while I was watching TV coverage of Squirrel Hill, Pittsburgh, the Sabbath, raining still. Some words on a screen make me turn on the TV. Man's attack. One of the many unfortunate events that have happened in the recent past. It's called Tree of Life, Squirrel Hill, Pittsburgh, the Sabbath. Raining still. Some words on a screen make me turn on the TV. Man's attacked a synagogue this time. It's everywhere. The local NBC affiliate, though it's somewhere not here. The local NBC affiliate, though it's somewhere not here. And CNN, which just days ago got, bomb and got a bomb in the mail. Unless it's fake news, you know. I see no blood. I couldn't see the blood from this perch on the couch months ago when Wendy Winters tried to save the newsroom by charging at the shooter with a recycle bin. Beautiful warrior. She's challenged and CNN, which just days ago got, bomb and got a bomb in the mail. Unless it's fake news, you know. I see no blood. I couldn't see the blood from this perch on the couch months ago when Wendy Winters tried to save the newsroom by charging at the shooter with a recycle bin. Beautiful warrior, she's challenged my pacifism, as has every orange flash and belligerent lip since 2017. Every pointless noise. I knew her a little, Wendy, no relation, in one of the two churches I couldn't quite join, the Unitarian Universalist 2017. Every pointless noise. I knew her a little, Wendy, no relation, in one of the two churches I couldn't quite join, the Unitarian Universalists, who seemed to see my God as a birthmark I could cover with the right foundations. So utterly pure, I was afraid to wear my purple shoes. These were my failings, not theirs. We're trying. Is that what worship is? The Quakers, so utterly pure, I was afraid to wear my purple shoes. These were my failings, not theirs. We're trying. Is that what worship is? The Pittsburgh synagogue held three kaif. The terror muted across the room. I watch a video on my laptop. A Quaker named Carter Nash, who talks of being congregations. Its name is the Tree of Life. The terror muted across the room. I watch a video on my laptop. A Quaker named Carter Nash, who talks of being God's hands. His voice through to find the path we could walk together, a path of love which might be limited to this screen, not the bigger one across the room, distracts me from his message. I fight on through to find the path we could walk together, a path of love, which might be limited to this screen, not the bigger one across the room, where I see the gray cloth, where I see the gray cloth, but not the gentle hand that wipes the rain from the lens that watches the reporter who tells us of the dead. It rains here, it rains there, it rains on the tarmac where the hateful bad but not the gentle hand that wipes the rain from the lens that watches the reporter who tells us of the dead. It rains here. It rains there. It rains on the tarmac 
where the hateful bastard I struggle to love like a f struggle to love like a friend tells us his wisdom. I turn him off for now. He's easier to love that way. Squirrel Hill, soft and gray, the rain slowing us. Us his wisdom. I turn him off for now. He's easier to love that way. Squirrel Hill, soft and gray, the rain slowing us. This one's called Blessing. After we got our VIP rich, let me start over here, Blessing. This one's called Blessing. After we got our VIP rich, let me start over here, blessing. VIP wristbands, they led us through to meet Jesus. The green room was, was smaller than we expected. He had changed from his robes into a chambray shirt and dockers. <laughs> After we got our VIP wristbands, they led us through to meet Jesus. The green room was, was smaller than we expected. He had changed from his robes into a chambray shirt and dockers. Tevas. He still had that aura, though, the scent of cloves and mown grass. I got snookered into taking camera after camera to shoot souvenirs, the old grip and grin. Its feet modestly clad in white socks and tevas. He still had that aura, though, the scent of cloves and mown grass. I got snookered into taking camera after camera to shoot souvenirs, the old grip and grin. His embrace was warm, brotherly, only a bit damp, and I felt supreme love and deep foolishness in equal portions. My companions yelled, say Christmas. It seemed polite to ask for a photo of my own. His embrace was warm, brotherly, only a bit damp, and I felt supreme love and deep foolishness in equal portions. My companions yelled, everyone feels stupid, it's okay. How much time do I have? One, two. Oh. I murmured, I feel stupid. The Lord said, everyone feels stupid. It's okay. How much time do I have? One two. November days, although it's not a dark poem. Um, right after the election in 2016, my favorite musician, Richard Thompson, announced that he was coming to. Oh. I am running fast. Well, I'll read another poem from those, those dark November days, although it's not a dark poem. Um, right after the election in 2016, my favorite musician, Richard Thompson, announced that he was coming to New York, and I just dropped everything. And it was like, I have to be there. I have to be with these people. And I wrote this poem inspired by that night. And it's called, Joni Mitchell Does the Security. This poem inspired by that night. And it's called, Joni Mitchell does the security interview for my Christmas bookstore job and asks me, have I ever stolen? I steal only from bars, from cafes, only what carries coffee or sugar or light, a china cup or stoneware when my first love left me in Pennsylvania, a crisp bookstore job and asks me, have I ever stolen? I steal only from bars, from cafes, only what carries coffee or sugar or light, a china cup or stoneware, a candle from a club where I was drunk on love, different friends, a different Richard. Did I need that candle? Left me in Pennsylvania. A crystal trifle bowl which, slipping, I dropped in the lot into a million stars. Barely a month ago, a candle from a club where I was drunk on love, Different friends, a different Richard. Did I need that candle or just want it? You can keep the job. Take the candle if you need it. I'd steal these coins for the Wurlitzer too if I could reach into the radio. But now, I or just want it. You can keep the job. Take the candle if you need it. I'd steal these coins for the Wurlitzer too if I could reach into the radio. But now I'm resting my head on my arms three hours before the interview. Wondering if nine bucks an hour is worth it, if anything is worth it but music. 
I can't steal music. It carries our ages, the lines of 19 and that old quilt and mirrors. Older, watching, here my arms, three hours before the interview, wondering if nine bucks an hour is worth it, if anything is worth it but music. I can't steal music. It carries our ages, the lines of night, and carry them off. Even your voice, dark, beautiful, darker, cracking, Joni, impossible to gather such, st such stars to make sugar. And that old quilt and mirrors, older, watching, hearing death come back and carry them off. Even your voice, dark, Beautiful, darker, cracking, Joni. Impossible to gather such, st such stars to make sugar. All right. This is no mud, no flowers. This is no mud, no flowers. There's a reason it cakes on your shoes. Misery loves company. One clod can't just skip over the creek or attract flocks on your shoes. Misery loves company. One clod can't just skip over the creek or attract flies by itself. It wants to spread the world its bagel. It wants you to taste it and know the world its bagel. It wants you to taste it and know where it came from. For all it knows, it might taste like chocolate. And if you don't know, you might find it sweet. Just know it bears you no malice. It's just in desperate need of its own fame. It'll never came from. For all it knows, it might taste like chocolate. And if you don't know, you might find it sweet. It'll never be the fringe tree, the mimosa, the white rose. Poor, sad, lonely hate. Okay, got one more. Yeah, I read here one other time, and it was the same night as Don Illich, and uh, it was the first time I met you. I don't know if you remember that, so it's so great to be here with, with people I know, Don and Maritza and Quasar, and to hear Zelda, who I hadn't heard before. I loved your work. This is called How to Be a 60s Sex Pot. Spell your name with a Y or extra E's. Saying it to the man, your lips will part longer. Be a double D in a deadbeat town. Big fish, big stride, walk west, shake your pom-poms, rack up the accolades, miss potato soup, miss third platoon, miss filler up. Stack the crowns carefully in the back seat, punch the gas, keep yourself open, free of commitment, Every town will lay down garlands. Miss Cherry Blossom, Miss Chihuahua Show, Miss Freeway, Miss Direct Mail, Miss Magnesium Lamp. Miss no opportunity to wear a sash, to shake your hair, wear white, tan judiciously, eat small red fruits with your French manicured fingers, lick them, keep your lamp trimmed and burning your powder dry, keep your feet and your glasses clean, read your contracts twice, miss nothing, miss the Levittown Cape Cod, miss the wooden headboard, miss the kids, miss letting your leg hair grow, miss Texas tomato, miss California, miss United Dairies, miss the critics, miss the Sundays, black satin slip and skid and miss the light post, miss 1967, miss black and white, miss Ogeny, Miss World, Miss the Light and Hit the Wall, Flame Out, Miss Blood, Miss Cenotaph, Miss Out. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for having us um, uh, come and read with such a, it was great to hear Pam and Don, and, and um, 
So David and I have been doing this now for, I lose track of time for over, for like three years. Couple's on four. <laughs> See? Um, and this is more an experience. And uh, it's really, it takes a lot of practice for us to get this right and get it seamless. And hopefully we'll succeed at that. Let's hope we can give a reading worthy of you coming and listening to us. Um, we're going to do. We're going to present five poems. Uh, first and last are our love poems. The second poem will be an extinction poem. The third poem is a counter extinction poem. And the fourth poem is uh, an enlightenment integration poem. We start with the love poem. This comes from um, Angeles Crest, San Gabriel Mountains, out in the west. These are all written for two voices. What is as fine as a pure heart singing? What is as fine as a pure, pure heart, heart singing? singing? What is as fine as, as the, the wind, wind singing through the holes in, in my, my heart, heart? Me beating out the rhythm of the rhyme. And the wind. Well, no, no one, one can, can speak, speak for the, the wind. wind. The wind, the wind, the wind knocked me back from, from the, the ridge crest. crest that last time I tripped. I listened and listened. I listened to, to the, the wind, wind, but I couldn't, couldn't understand, understand the, the meaning, meaning of the, of the wind's, wind's nonstop howl. howl. The wind, the wind knocked me back from, from the, the ridge crest. crest. This time it's howl meant you're my guest in my personal language. That can mean you're, you're my, my ghost. ghost. And I thanked it. And, and I, I thanked, thanked it for its honest blast. Then I saw you, you again. Love, love flushed, flushed through my skin again. After these years, after, after all these years, years we ghosts fully in flesh. We ghosts. We ghosts. And your radiance harmonized with the wind. wind. And the wind. And the wind sings, sings through the holes in my heart. Your radiance harmonized, harmonized with the wind, wind, and the wind sings through the holes, through the holes, through, through the, the holes, holes in my heart. I gave my heart, I, I gave, gave my heart, heart to the plants, I, I gave, gave my heart, heart to the birds, I, I gave, gave my heart, heart to the mountain, I gave, gave my heart, heart to the wind. wind. The plants give, give me back, back my sight. sight. The birds give, give me back my ears. The mountain gives, gives me back my Buddhahood. And the wind and the wind sings through the holes in my heart. I do not speak. I, I do not, not speak for the wind. The wind, the wind speaks, speaks for, for me. me. Let me ask you now: uh, Are our voices balanced? Can you on both sides equally? Okay, good. Um, this is an extinction poem. It's a warning against us. Um, it comes in the English hunting song tradition, uh, of, of which uh, you have, uh, for example, uh, Sir Thomas Wyatt, uh, who so list to hunt, I know where is in hind, noli mi tangere for Caesar's I aim. Uh, the deer she did uh, across the plain, the keeper fetched her back again, all for to shoot a merry little doe among the leaves so green, oh. This is in that tradition, but it is much more vicious, and the poem starts with the hunt already in progress. It's called Anthem for the Earth. The Earth is our nest on the road to extinction. Sick em, sick em, we've, we've got, got em on the run. Sick em, sick em, you can almost hear the, the hunters, hunters cry on their dogs. dogs. The hunters that are we ourselves. The hunters that are we ourselves. We have met the prey face, face to face. face. It, it is we who are hounding. It, it is we who are driving. The prey hurtling off the cliff, down, down, onto the bedrock bottom of, of the, the open pit of extinction. extinction. The open pit of extinction. Splat. The prey begins to crumple. We, we see it 
in slow motion. We have met the prey. We have met the prey. Face, face to face. face. It, it is, is we, we who are hounding ourselves. ourselves. It, it is we who are driving ourselves. Hurtling off the cliff. We see it in slow motion. Our hurtling, hurtling off, off the cliff. cliff. Off the cliff. Off the cliff. Down, down, down. Onto the bedrock bottom of, of the, the open pit, pit of extinction. extinction. We, we are, are digging, digging our own pit into our nest. The earth, all, all earth, earth, earth is, is our, our nest. nest. We are bleeding. We are bleeding the earth. We are bleeding. And the earth, all earth, earth, earth is, is our nest. nest. The earth is bleeding. Black blood. The earth is bleeding brown gray smoke smudge. We, we cannot, cannot staunch, staunch the, the flow, flow from the earth, our earth, our, our blood, blood, and the earth. All, all earth, earth, earth is, is our, our nest. nest. Homo sapiens is sucking the blood of its, its own, own nest bed. bed. Homo sapiens is urinating and defecating, dumping crushed bones and rancid flesh into the open pit, into, into the, the open, open pit, pit of its own nest and the earth. All, All earth, 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 earth is, is our nest. nest. Only dying species, only, only dying, dying species, species excrete in their nests. It is a sign of a dying species to dump its refuse, its own dung, into its nest, its, its own, own nest. nest. We see it all in slow motion. The fall, the crumple, the rising moan, wrestling in the nest as, as the, the nest, nest falls apart, and the earth, all earth, earth, earth is, is our nest. nest. The earth is our arteries, our, our blood, blood veins, veins, our lymph flow, our, our gut. gut. The earth is our nerve web. We, we feel, feel pulsations in the air, rock and see we, we receive, receive the buzz of bees, bees and the flowers corn grasses and, and trees we, we love the whales honey in our ears we love the waves of fragrance wafting and curling with soft edges in our nest the earth all earth earth, earth is, is our nest. nest as we learn to fly and leave our nest we must bend down, scrape, and clean our nest. Instead, we, we play, play with, with money in the, the muck. muck. Instead, we, we suck, suck off the nest of its, its blood. And the earth. All earth. Earth, earth is, is our, our nest. nest. Homo sapiens. Species, we must, must catch, catch ourselves as we, we fall into, into the, the open pit. pit. Homo sapiens, let's catch our own dung before it falls to earth. Our oh, nest, our, our own nest, earth, earth all earth. earth. Homo sapiens, on the road to extinction, let's turn the sign from go to stop and slow. So we can rest and grow grow and rest in our nest our, our own living nest. nest earth all earth earth, earth is, is our nest, nest. And, and earth all earth earth is, is our nest, nest. Earth. earth all earth earth, earth is, is our nest, nest. this is a counter poem to that uh, I thought I just can't keep on writing these horrible, horrible responses to all the science we're getting. And the science is horrible. Um, we're not going to go into that here, but it is. Um, this is this is supposing we get through this bottleneck. Supposing we get through this bottleneck in the next 100,000 years or whatever it is. It's called Thanks and Praise from the Far Future for Saving the Earth. It's in five stanzas. Thanks and Praise from the far future for saving the earth. Thank you, thank, thank you, 
Thank you. Thank you. We thank you from, from the, the far, far future. future. We are the descendants and offspring of your great, great grandchildren. We thank you from, from the, the far, far future, future for saving the planet and the life that teems on it for, for us and, and all consciousness. consciousness. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. We thought we, we should, should thank you while you are still alive and can feel our heartfelt warmth. We thought we, we should, should thank, thank you while we are still unborn and barely wriggling in your thoughts of all the heaviness of, of what, what is yet, yet to, to come. come. Yet to come. Yet to come. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. We thank you from the far, far future, future, for we know you struggled. You struggled. You, you struggled, struggled to, to save, save us. us. And we say, well, well done, well, well done. done. Because we know you, you did, did it. it. And yes, we look forward to the descendants of our own great, great grandchildren thanking us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanking us for saving, saving the them. earth. For, for them. them and applauding us saying well done well, well done, done because we know you, you did, did it. it this is a message from your far future this is a message from our far future thank you thank, thank you. you thank you thank, thank you. you we thank you for saving us the planet and consciousness and yes, we, we look forward, forward to being thanked from, from our, our far future, future in turn. This is the chain. This, this is, is the chain, chain of gratitude stretching back from all of our far, far futures. We all borrow from the far future. We, we all, all borrow, borrow from, from the, the far future, future to build the honeycomb of consciousness the honeycomb of consciousness, we, in turn, lend, lend you, you our strength, strength, bending back from the far future. Take our love. Take our love. And, and pull, pull yourselves, yourselves up. up. This is a, a, a reworking of the, um, of the mantra of the oldest printed text on earth, uh, the Heart of Wisdom Sutra, which was printed in China around 800. Uh, the Sanskrit of it is gyate, uh, gyate, uh, para gyate, parasam gyate, bodhisvaha. Um, and that is incorporated in trans translation in the poem. There's a part which is not punarapi net jananam, punarapi maranam, which I'm translating to, uh, to uh, modern English. It would be, uh, it's so terrible to be stuck. It's so terrible to be stuck. It's so terrible to be stuck. Ah, I wish I could get out of here. It's so terrible to be stuck. OK. Um, Heart of Wisdom Sutra, retake number one. Gyate, gyate, hanya gyate, soaka gyate, parasam gyate, 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 para gyate, parasam gyate, bodhisvaha. Gone, gone, gone beyond, gone all the way gone, gone way beyond gone, gone beyond, gone beyond. The beyond. Gyate, gyate, hanya gyate. Gone, gone, gone beyond. So aka gyate, parasam gyate. Gone all the way gone. Gyate, gyate, para gyate. Gone way beyond gone. Parasam gyate, bodhisvaha. Gone beyond, gone beyond the beyond. It, it comes, comes clear. clear. Punarapi jananam, punarapi maranam, punarapi janani jatare shayanam. Iha samsare bahudu stare kripaya pare pahimurare. 
still here in the mixed pixels of pain but already gone and already back all here in the clear all here all here the mixed pixels of pain dancing, dancing all, all the while, while. Still here, in the mixed pixels of pain, but already gone and already back. All here in the clear, all here, all here. The mixed pixels of pain dancing all the while. The mixed pixels of pain dancing all the while. Gone, gone, gone beyond. So gone all the way gone, and still going gone, gone way beyond gone, and still going right here, all here, gone beyond, gone beyond the beyond, and always arriving here, all here, all here. Gyate, gyate, hanya gyate, soaka gyate, parasam gyate, 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 para gyate, parasam gyate, bodhisvaha, all here in the clear. Gone beyond, beyond, beyond. gone beyond the beyond, gone beyond, beyond. beyond. But always arriving, but, but always, always arriving, arriving here. here. All here, all here, all here in the clear, all here, all here, Bodhisattva, all here in the clear. This last poem is a um, translation from the great uh, uh, Arab poet. Uh, it's translated by Lina Jayusi, and I've arranged it for two voices. I've arranged the translation for two voices. It's a Dukhul il al Bahar, Hadithat Tajibat al Habi Akhir, On Entering the Sea. Love happened at last. Love happened at last. We, we entered. entered God's paradise. Paradise sliding under the skin. Sliding under the skin. Of the water like fish. We, we saw, we, we saw, saw the precious pearls. Of the sea and we were, were amazed. amazed. Love happened at last. Love happened at last. Love happened at last. At last. Love happened at last without intimidation. And with symmetry. So I gave. And you gave. So you gave. And I gave. And, and we, we were, were fair. fair. It happened. It happened with marvelous ease. Marvelous ease, like writing. With jasmine water. Or like a spring. Or like, like a, a spring. spring. Fountain, or like you spring fountain from the ground. With marvelous ease. It happened. Yes, love happened at last. Yes, love happened at last. And, and we, we were, were amazed. amazed. Thank, Thank you. you. Please join me in thanking these wonderful poets, and didn't we travel a long distance tonight? This such a great way to enter into the official National Poetry Month celebration by declaring tonight that poetry is alive and well in our community. So uh, we would like you all, thank you again for coming. Thanks to Bien for handling the mics and the tech uh, support for us tonight. Please join us for refreshments and some of our poets have bought books for you to buy. I want to remind you of <coughs> upcoming events. We'll be back in this space on the 16th of April for our third Thursday reading. And please mark your calendars for Sunday the 7th of April at 5 p.m. in this space for our first Encuentro Poetico 
think I'm getting the pronunciation down, where I will be joining seven Latinx poets from our community. We're collaborating with uh, Casa de la Cultura El Salvador in nearby Silver Spring, who have invited these poets to join us. There will be refreshments and an open mic. I've already got one person signed up for the open mic, Mariposa. Um, most of the poems will be read in Spanish, the original language in which they were written, but with some translations and with short uh, synopses so that even if your Spanish is like mine, not great, you can enjoy the flowering of poetry among our uh, Latino, Latinx neighbors. So please join us on the 7th, and please stick around tonight and join us for poetry and books and refreshments. Thanks. I didn't have a car in those days, so, you know. Um, but, you know, there is, there is a sense of momentum. There's a sense of the shifting tides of a river uh, swelling or, you know, clouds gathering. I mean, that, that's a constant. And you hear it in the sort of the, the emotional and musical nuances as things build, recede, build, recede, variate. Uh, it, it's really a remarkable thing. And, and Daniel was, I, I think, in his playing, made that very clear of how things build their own momentum. And when they're finished, they let you know that they're finished. They let you know that you're finished. 